people to call friend, and I'm very grateful for that. You know him by many names, but his real name is Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion, ladies and gentlemen. This is pretty exciting. Ten years ago today, I had my very first San Diego Comic-Con experience. Uh, nobody knew what Firefly was except uh, its name. And Joss Whedon was up at a panel of several thousand, put that anywhere. <laughs> and I was sitting over on the side against the wall watching with uh, some writers from Buffy and Angel. They, they, he loaded this all into a van and said, let's go to Comic-Con. And he said, uh, he said, when he said the word Firefly, the, the, the reaction was so visceral, the floor was shaking. I thought it, it was the big one. <laughs> and here we are, it's been a very exciting weekend, 10 years later, and I'm here for Firefly. So it means, it means a lot to me. It's a, it was a very special uh, part of my life, and, it, and it's, uh, it's uh, given me a lot of opportunities, uh, not, not the least of being here at this off-campus event at Nerd HQ. I don't, I don't think you guys understand the phenomenal amount of work it goes to, taking a, to, to, to get a, a venue, to, to throw it together, to get you guys crammed into a room. A bigger room than last year. So I would like to say thank you very much to, to Zach and, and to your people for putting this together. You're welcome. Thank you. It's people like you and it's people like you that make this possible. So give all yourself a round of applause. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. It's, it's a labor of love. It really is. It's a labor of love. And you guys are making a lot of money for Operation Smile. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, we raised $40,000 with many of your help. And this year, we're on track to raising $100,000 for Operation Smile. Last year, I came to do uh, this panel last year at, the, at Nerd HQ. And the first thing I said, how's it going? First thing Zach said to me is, we need a bigger venue. I came in here, I ran into a sister, I said, how's it going? She said, we need a bigger venue. <laughs> we need a convention center. <laughs> you guys, let's get to the important stuff. There's a burning question in your mind, in your heart. It's, it's coming up like bile and acid is burning you right there, that little tickle. You're dying to know. What, what is it? What, do you, what, is the, what are you dying to know? What is, your, is there a question? Do we have a questions? Do we have questions? There's a yellow wristband I see. Stand up, mister. That's you. Yes. Oh, stand up, lady. <laughs> the wristband looked male. What was it like working again with Alan for Trailer Park Heroes? What was it work, working again with Alan? On what? What did we do? On Trailer Park Heroes. Never heard of it. <laughs> um, I, I hang out with Alan a lot, and uh, we joke around a lot. Uh, we, we take on these characters. Mine is the uh, mildly idiotic, incredibly narcissistic, egomaniacal ass. And his is the uh, forced into the second tier position uh, really qu quite capable of much more and yet doesn't get the credit he deserves and he's in the back just getting crapped on. Uh, it's our perceived utility. So <laughs> watching him do that in Trailer Park Heroes is pretty much just like hanging out with him every day. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, the bastard stole every scene he was in. Right? He was so funny, man. You, you, both, you both stole the whole series. This is true. We're both funny.
but it's, 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 that, uh, it's the team effort. It's the comedy team effort. I set them up, Alan knocks them down. Who's up next? Anybody? I'm told I'm next. Hello, thank you for doing this. We appreciate it. Oh, you're very kind. What is the one thing, if you could tell, what's the one thing people should know about you? What defines you? I have an over, thank you to comic books, I have an overdeveloped sense of justice. <laughs> growing up, if, uh, uh, I have an older brother, uh, growing up, my sense of justice said, if my brother hit me, I hit you back, and then I hit you for starting it. <laughs> that was my sense of justice. And it never really worked out because, you know, he figured once there's a hit and I hit, it's even. I said, no, you get one for starting it. And it was always kind of a, you know, if, if you knew my brother, <laughs> I mean, it started there. We're, we're obviously, we're very tight. I wish he was here with me now. He Actually, he is here with me now. <laughs> Jeff? Uh, we're very tight. We're best friends. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, have, I, have, I have a bit of a high horse. I, I, my, my, my overdeveloped sense of justice. That's that. Who's next? Am, am I, am I, I picking or is there a microphone going around? No, 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 I think I the, volunteers, the volunteers are no, no. seeing your hands go back. up and they're getting... Perfect, the perfect. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So this question is the product of two glasses of wine, just so you know. All right. So on Firefly... A show that everybody loves, right? Right? Uh, when um, you were in that episode of Trash, where you're kind of naked. Firefly Trash, naked. Yes, naked. Very good. Okay. So I know that you're kind of a little bit of a jokester. I'm just wondering what kind of jokes happened in that kind of environment. That's a good question. Um, Adam, I was telling, I was talking to Adam about this. Adam, Adam Baldwin, you know Adam Baldwin. If at, yeah, if Adam, uh, if Adam was here, it would be better. Adam is here. I came to rescue you. I hope you don't mind I invited a friend to buy. Thanks for having me, so to speak. <laughs> On these uh, days, I, I was out in the desert uh, in the morning where it's very cold. Yeah. And you're doing a nude scene. But for the sake of modesty, you wear what kind of boils down to uh, a mitten. Yeah, clip-on uh, mitten. There you go. So, it's really hard to keep your dignity standing around with a mitten on you. I'd rather kind of just kind of just have it all hanging out, I guess. Go for it. Just So, what I did was I asked for a headshot of Joss Whedon. I cut out his face and I glued it to the mitten. <laughs> So if anybody looked down, they just saw Joss looking back up. That was the best thing ever. I swear to God. What do you got? That was, oh. I was just going to grab my water. Oh, you get this. It's chin. <laughs> we have another question here. Uh, the volunteers are taking care of. Over here, here. Perfect. Hello, little one. What is your name? Connor. First of all, I'd like to say that you have been my hero for two years because of your Green Lantern movies. Second is, when you got to do the voice of Green Lantern, were you excited about that? <laughs> did, Connor, did you say his name? Connor, that's an excellent question. Connor, when you do a voice for uh, a, an animated show, it doesn't matter what you look like because there's no cameras running on you, so you don't have to do your hair nice. You can wear a hat. 
You don't have to put your contact lenses in. You can put on your glasses. But I always wore my Green Lantern T-shirt. <laughs> Was I excited? In brightest day. In darkest night. No evil shall escape my sight. I wish I may. I wish I might. Have a ring that makes, gives me flight. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Over here. All right. Is this on? Oh, there it is. All right. Um, thank you for doing this. Operation Smile is a great cause. Thank you both for being here. Uh, the question is, I think a lot of us here want you to dish on what the relationship is between Mal and Inara five years after the events of Serenity. <laughs> now this is just pulling it out of my ass. <laughs> Connor, excuse me, but. <laughs> Connor, Connor. Just... <laughs> I would say five years from the events after Serenity. Well, they had to have made out by then, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it would probably have been pretty good for her. Any little ones? Any little, uh, any little baby little, Reynolds? Little chillins? Little chillins, little baby Reynolds is running. Space Reynolds. chillins. Baby wash. The baby wash? Yeah. <laughs> what? That's, that's oh, cool. right, because he's dead. <laughs> he's so dead. <laughs> yeah, he's it's still so funny. <laughs> I asked him earlier. No more crying. <laughs> I like to think that I like to think that it would progress to a certain point. Eh, why is my voice so high? <laughs> I don't know, Stewie. Why? <laughs> God. I would. I would like to think that they. They maybe even held hands. Connor. Yeah, <laughs> mom. Yeah, mom. Uh, yeah. I'd like to think it would progress. Five years is a long time. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't put over anything on Malcolm Reynolds. But would they, have settled, would they have settled down into a, a domesticity nope. in the shuttle? Nope. No? Nope. Not in, okay, nope. got it. You sure? Smuggling and stuff. Where would Jane be in five years after that? <laughs> a farmer watching. <laughs> I figured out how to use these spy cams. That's Vacationing uh, or, or in that or little mutter town. <laughs> I go every summer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the way I go to Comic Con to feel like a hero for a weekend. Yeah, build me, a, build me a nice obstacle course there where we can shoot guns and <sighs> drink mutter's milk. Yeah. Good question. Well, yeah, well, I don't know. Who's next? Hi. Um, my two question is: On Castle, you play your character so well. Is that because uh, Castle stems from your own character? First of all, that's true. I do a very good job. <laughs> I had an itch. I was slapping my leg because I had itched. <laughs> what, was, what was the question? Is there anything that I base on from myself onto that character? Right. Good question. Adam, what do you think? <laughs> what you know of me, how much of, of me is in Castle? Castle's uh, wimpier than you are. It's true. In real life, no. In real life, he's a tough guy. He goes on these hikes and all these. Things. Castles, you know, 
uh, I was fortunate enough to have been invited on to play a little role there, so I was able to watch. That's right. I forgot about that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And a little story about this jacket is at the, at the end of the show, he said, do you want the jacket? I was like, yeah, give me the jacket. Yeah, for sure. And I got a text the next day, we need the jacket back for inserts. So I forwarded him the email. I said, troublemaker. He got a two-word response, on it. Didn't hear anything of it, and didn't hear anything back. So I get to keep the thing. But, yeah, the most beautiful thing about walking onto a set that Nathan is in basically the lead of is that he carries it on his shoulders. He's got all, all the uh, hours that he has to work, and he builds a, a leadership foundation that's inspirational for all the people that work there. And that was the experience that I had walking onto a place. Also, I, I saw some very familiar faces from the crew. Some people came over from Chuck. Some people came over from uh, X-Files that I worked on, and some were holdovers from, holdovers from Firefly. So to have this guy at the... Uh, uh, I guess you you'd be called the department head. Number one on the call sheet is basically the actor's department head, and you can have no better guy than this guy. I am right now so glad I invited you to this <laughs> thing. <laughs> Could have gone either way, buddy, but I'm really I'll happy about it. I'll never have right to now. give this back now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Over there at the back. Uh, Hello, hi. lady. Hi, Nathan. Um, I just want to say, Edmonton misses you. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little loopy. I was up all night on the sidewalk waiting to get into Firefly this morning. All right. Thank you for waiting. And, uh, but I wanted to ask you about a little project that's coming out later this year, um, one where you got to play with a lot of your friends. Is there anything you can tell us about Much Ado? Where am I about to play what now? Uh, Much Ado. Much Ado about nothing. Quick story, I'll tell you. Uh, Josh used to have uh, Shakespeare brunches where he'd have a brunch and he'd call people over and have them read Shakespeare in his backyard. And he kept saying, one of these days, we're going to film this. I said, all right. So I figured we'd just be sitting around filming us reading it. Uh, and then he said, okay, we're going to do it. And he called me up. He says, you're going to be Dogberry. And here's your shooting schedule. He, had, he, he let me, he arranged it so that everybody would work on weekends to accommodate my castle schedule, because I did while I was doing castle. I called him up. Uh, reading Shakespeare, is, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's not impossible. It's still English. It's tough. Memorizing Shakespeare? <laughs> Come on, man. Cue cards, please. I mean, it's all over the place. You can talk like Yoda, because he just flips it backwards. But with Shakespeare, yeah, it's anyone's guess what's going to happen with a word. So I called them up and I said, hey, man, I can't, I, I, I can't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't memorize this. I'm not going to be ready for Saturday. I, I'm going to hold everybody back. Is there any way, because there's emails going around, because this one guy couldn't make it, so he replaced him. And then that guy couldn't make it, so he replaced him again. I said, uh, do you have maybe a replacement for me? He said, listen, Nathan, buddy. Chum, my hero. <laughs> the last part I made up. <laughs> he said, this is a joyful lark that we are doing amongst friends. This is not a crushing commitment. Saturday, you don't even have any words. I just wanted to establish your character, but quite honestly, we don't need you. Take Saturday. Relax. You're going to be great. And I don't want you to back out on this because it's going to be a great experience. Also, I don't have any replacement for you. <laughs> I almost chickened out and Joss wouldn't let me. And I'm so grateful because it was such a, a, a wonderful experience. And now I can say I'm well-rounded. And have you seen, you've seen it, right? I've seen, I've seen scenes of it. I haven't seen the, the whole thing, but I've seen some scenes. And you're I'm, in the clear. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy. Okay, you're All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the clear. Good one. Good question, nerd. And I say that with love. <laughs> Sir? Uh, Firefly panel this morning was absolutely amazing. Hey, how many people were there this morning? How many people were lined up last night 
It got woken up by Joss Whedon. <laughs> Were you like, am I dreaming? <laughs> I went down there about 11.30. I saw a few people down there. I, w I woke up this morning and stretched and stood in front of my window and looked out at that lineup. I said, wow, because from there and all the way through those tents across the street, across the street, down the way through the thing, all the way all the way there, and then all the way back. So, wow. What would those people lined up for? <laughs> I soon found out. Your question. Uh, the Dr. Horrible sequel, has it started filming yet? If not, how soon? Today, I was with someone. <laughs> I feel safe saying that this someone is involved with Dr. Horrible uh, intimately. Uh, there was a conversation, I would say a sequel to Dr. Horrible, uh, the chances, fair to really good. <laughs> See the way I, I really made him wait on that one, like I stretched it out, and then boom, booyah. Never more than 20 seconds, but right up to it. Hi. Hello. Um, I was just wondering, because I know you're a really big fan of Game of Thrones, if... I'm a big fan of the... Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering if, after reading all the books and then watching the show, if anybody's portrayal made you think differently about a character. And if, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if not, did you like certain characters more after seeing the show. Okay, here's how it happened for me. Someone, uh, Molly Quinn told me, I don't have HBO, but I want to watch this show, so I'm coming to your house on Sunday night. <laughs> and she and her mom and myself sat down with some popcorn and some snacks, and we watched this, I think it was the third episode of Game of Thrones. I was like, all right, let's sit down and check it out. And I was like, You know what I mean? You know what I mean. So I went back, I caught two, uh, the first two episodes, and then I was, I was with it every week. Once the episodes were over, I started reading the books. Uh, I was on book two, coming into book three. I just came back from uh, uh, my brother and myself. We do a trip every year, a bucket list trip. We, that, that year, the bucket list had uh, Italy and uh, Croatia. And this whole time, I had my nose buried in this book. And I uh, got him back to my house. I said, you got to watch this show. At every episode, we always watched the opening credits in full and sang lyrics to the music. <laughs> oh, we cried. It was great. <laughs> Tywin Lannister, I'll have to say, was intense on the television program. And thank God for the TV program, because if, if, you, if you have not, if, you, if you're thinking, I think I'll read these books, I'm going to say, watch the first season. First, because otherwise you're not going to know who anybody is. There's so many people in this damn thing, you won't know who. It's nice to be able to put a face on these people. And Tywin Lannister. Oh, that guy's an evil prick. <laughs> but I like him. But I like him. I like him. Good one. Nice. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. <laughs> what am I doing? What's that reference? Oh, it's the crow. Fire it up. Fire it up. Right? I was just I'm excited to be here. It's a very cunning hat. <laughs> I'll say. Um, I was just wondering what the best prank you guys ever did on any of the other cast members during Firefly or Serenity. Made your windshield sticky. Yeah. That, that was my favorite on, on, uh, that I perpetrated upon you. Somebody played a joke on him. He thought it was me. So he put gummy worms on the windshield of my car. Yeah which promptly melted in the August heat of Los yeah. Angeles. Hey. Oh, Nathan loved this car so much. Brand new car! I know. <laughs> I had never owned a brand new car in my entire life. I keyed it, too. 
I could, I could say, I could say it now. It's ten years later. It's ten years later, right? That car's not even. You don't even own that car now. My friend does. It's in the family still. I sold oh. it to a friend. Oh, still well. visit it. Tell him I say hey. It's not far from here right now. It's, not, <laughs> it's right by Anaheim. What was that prank you pulled or for uh, Alan's birthday with all the? Pictures or Alan stayed at my house while I was in Vancouver shooting something, and then he was looking for a place to live in L.A. So I played a joke on him while he was at my house. Uh, he used to smoke, so I gave him a lighter to light a cigarette. It was a shocking lighter. <laughs> so we all had a laugh, and I gave him another lighter to look completely different, and he went to light a cigarette, and that was a shocking lighter too. <laughs> After that, he would never light a cigarette at my house. So when he went to stay at my house, I, I just made sure everything was nice and clean. On the coffee table was nothing but a pad and a pen. And two weeks went by, and he called me up. Uh, he said, oh, everything went great. I'll just write Nathan a little note, say everything's good. The cat's been fed. Everything's good. And he presses the pen. He goes, eh. <laughs> Son of a... And when he left and I got back to my house, I found that he had accidentally left. Somebody sent him a calendar of his uh, neighbors, had some photos of their family when he was growing up. And... I took all the goofiest pictures of young Alan that I could find. One like his parents were holding a, a lobster, and he's going. <laughs> and I took all these goofy pictures, and I said, this will come in handy someday. That was 2002. Yeah. And then late 2004, I said, today's the day. <laughs> it was his birthday, and I had color copies made of all the goofiest pictures of Alan, and I had them posted up all over the bar where... River kicks everybody's ass. And grabs me. Uh, grabs you by the. The ghoulies, yeah. The hoot nannies. Yeah. <laughs> the the hoot nannies. The hoot and the nannies. Nice. Anyway, back to Alan. He said, how, Where did these come from? How did. Who could have passed them? It was Nathan. <laughs> Classic. That's not fair. That's not fair that you would immediately. Accuse me, it's completely unfair and absolutely true. <laughs> Good question. I like your shirt too, but you look better in red. It's another, it's another Firefly reference. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Blue sun and... Uh, Live life with blue sun. <laughs> right? Remember that? Okay, good. Sir. I absolutely love Firefly and I love the hero Canton. <laughs> You. Oh, your eyes are so. <laughs> I was. Uh, uh, my question's for Nathan. Uh, Who would win in a battle? Heads up. <laughs> it's, it's good. That's it's that's a little bait and switch, don't you think? It's fine. It's fine. Continue. <laughs> uh, Who would win, Doctor Horrible or Doctor Tight Pants? Captain Tight Pants or Doctor Horrible? <laughs> uh, I, well, obviously Captain Tight Pants. Because Dr. Horp is not real. <laughs> He's just a made up song and dance guy. Singing and tuning stuff. <laughs> Who's next? Um, Mr. Hey, Billion. Yes, um, please, call me your lordship. <laughs> Your lordship. Okay. I'm sorry? Your lordship. Your lordship. Yes. Continue. Yes. Um, I know the idea was next on you being Hank Prim for a cameo on the Avengers. It was next because you didn't have time. But seeing that they m might do an Ant-Man movie, have you come up as a possibility now? Let me start at the beginning. What you believe you know <laughs> about a cameo on the Avengers it is not true. I, I was not going to have a cameo on the Avengers. That's uh, just internet... What do you call that? Rumor. Crap. Horseshit. <laughs> Connor. Connor. <laughs> Hooey. Connor, I feel terrible. <coughs> I'm going to put $20 towards Operation Smile for those uh, swears. <laughs> Now, by all means, curse up a storm. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Who's next? Who's uh, that? Yes, please. Um, well, first of all, thank you both for taking time to be here with us. Um, <laughs> you blame him for me. <laughs> um, Nathan, I was wondering, last season on Castle, it was suggested that Castle's father may be involved with the CIA. What? And, <laughs> and um, I was wondering if that was something that you'd like to see maybe pursued this coming season, and if maybe you think that there is any hesitation on Castle's part to dig into that considering what he's seen happen with Beckett dig it, digging into her mother. Right. Uh, I think there's going to be some headway made as to uh, the identity of Castle's father. I think that uh, I'm interested to see how Castle will react. He's not a, he's not a guy who's uh, haunted by who's my dad. He's okay. With just him. He's never known a dad, so he's, he's all right not knowing him. Um, what, what, what was the other question? What was the other part? Oh, right. Would there be any? Okay, yeah. I don't think, well, I don't think anybody's gunning for his dad, really. really in a way, I don't think there's any kind of circumstances surrounding Castle's dad that would get Castle into trouble if he found out he had a dad, other than, where's my allowance? <laughs> Backlogged. I don't know, I was only on one episode. <laughs> That's true. Um, here's something I'd like to see on Castle. It's something we did on Firefly. We would bring characters back. I like that. Because the audience is in on, ah, this guy. I remember that guy. I want to see some characters coming back. I would like to see uh, Michael Trucco make another appearance on, uh, right? Deming or Schlemming. Um, I would like to see Detective Slaughter make a comeback, right? Great. Loved it. Where you got to go like, I know a guy. Oh, God, I don't know. Never mind. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not calling, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> I'm booked. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Maybe even, uh, you know what, I'd like, to, I'd like to have a character come in where Castle and Beckett are working on a crime, and someone comes in, and it's another cop, and it's another author, and they are doing like the same thing, kind of, but in a schleppier version of what Castle doing. He's really upset about it, because they're copying his idea. Maybe to play the author, we could get like someone like Zach Levi. And he's like this really suave, affected kind of English guy. And it turns out he's got a fake accent, and he's like from New Jersey. Well, there's a lot of English folks in New Jersey, Nathan. <clears throat> that could be real. That would be amazing, by the way. I'd love to do that. You heard it. Legally binding. I w who's, who's uh, over here? Oh, over oh yes. You see over here. The, the, room. the voice is coming from nowhere. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Adam, Nathan, thank you guys very much. I actually, Nathan, want to thank you for a, something I don't think you get thanked often enough for, for what you've done for photobombing. My, my question is a two-part question. I would like to ask you both uh, how you got into photobombing and... <laughs> What, you might, what advice you might have for an uh, amateur photobomber that is hoping to really get professional? Uh, I don't know that I really found photobombing so much as photobombing found me. Uh, I would like to say it's something I just kind of fell into. If you are to photo, to bomb a photo, I would say... It's like you're coming from someplace and you're going to someplace. And this little thing here, that's not your mission in life. This is just a moment, a slice of time. And just, just decide what that journey was. And I often go with this one. <laughs> Something's obviously going on in the back. It's not enough that your face be in there. You've got to have an emotion. 
It's got to completely detract from the, the subject of your photo. Excellent question. Oh. Oh, captain, I know you. My captain. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Adam. Um, uh, you are a very heroic and inspirational uh, character in Firefly and in real life. Hold it, hold it. Okay. Let me just let this sink in. Yeah. Go. Just, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> and I'm curious, uh, what actors have inspired you, you know, as you've been growing up over time? Uh, have any of you folks seen uh, a, a movie called uh, Done the Impossible, uh, the, the, the movie by fans, for the fans? That's just, just stand up, take a bow. Brian, take a bow. Um, obviously, I still constantly from, from Harrison Ford. I, I, anything I see on TV that, makes, that moves me, that's honest, uh, I steal from Alan Tudyk. Don't tell him. I steal from Alan Tudyk all the time. Um, I've stolen like four things of yours in specifics things. What? What, what, what? things? Yeah. Tell me. Uh, Jane was always very tactile. He's always ha he always had to be touching something. Right. Touching I, something. I, I stole that from Eli Wallach. And I from you. Okay. We pay it forward. Yeah. When Cass is on the crime scene and, and he's re and he's always got to be touching stuff like he's not supposed to. And Beckett says, "Don't touch that." <laughs> <laughs> who do you steal from? Who do you who do you, who inspires you? Well, Clint Eastwood, I like Clint Eastwood. I like, uh, you know, aspire to that sort of thing. That's the kind of stuff I grew up with, watching uh, Clint Eastwood and Jason Robards and, you know, Eli Wallach, that, that character-y stuff. Uh, Ernest Borgnine, God rest his soul. I always thought you had a, a, a real kind of swagger and, and, and the meanness of, of Clint Eastwood, but with the, the imposing hugeness of, of John Wayne. Oh, well, thanks, Pilgrim. <laughs> you want to see my impersonation of John Wayne? Really? Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Here's, John, here, here's my John Wayne. Lefty. Now righty. <laughs> yeah. Lead with the shoulders like it hurts. Good one. Good question. Who's up? So Sing I'm, it, buddy. I'm Connor's dad, and uh, <laughs> I think that you can dig a little deeper, you know, with the amount of mistakes that you've made on the swearing front during the panel, just to <laughs> contribute to Zach. So you're, just, you're Connor's dad? I'm Connor's dad. No shit. Yeah, right? <laughs> Thank you. And, and I actually did have a question, a serious question. F and A uh, hole. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, Nathan, you've had the chance on both Castle and Firefly to have some of the coolest dialogue, I think, on TV, period. And uh, if there's something that sticks out in your mind, a cool scene, a cool line, something along those lines, would you please perform it for us now? some help. <laughs> Your coolest line. I, I don't know. I don't watch what, TV. What do, I'm going to do, you I'm gonna do one of your coolest line. lines and you do one of my coolest lines. Oh, are you okay? Oh, okay. Ready? <laughs> You're going to do me and I'm going to do you? It's a double cam half shaft, full bore automatic, two barrel dingle poppers and a fairy dingle slop hair trigger. <laughs> It is my very favorite gun. <laughs> we do business. We do business. We get paid.
I'll be in my bunk. Can't, can't top that. Let's go. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> right over here in the green shirt. Gentlemen, I'm interested to know, you've had a chance to do acting on uh, TV, voiceovers in animation. Is there another venue that you would love to explore as an actor? Another thing you have not done yet? Broadway or anything? Claymation. <laughs> you done Robot Chicken? Yes, I have. Actually, ooh, so I guess, never mind. Um, oh, you know what? On my list of things I would love to do, I would love to do a Pixar movie. I said, I sure hope I get to do a nice, beautiful Disney Pixar movie. Dear God in heaven, if you are just and kind, let me do one before Zach Levi. God likes me more. I don't know. I. You were. I gotta say, you were really good. I didn't know you could sing. I did not know you could sing, and you were up there at the Academy Awards, knocking them dead with that song. Thanks, buddy. No, thank you.